Warm greetings from the high 10. It is Everyday Shenanigans on this Wednesday, April 1st, 2020. Thanks for joining me uh, this evening. I hope you all are well and safe in your homes, corona free, in good spirits. I will be praying for all of you. Okay, I want to bring you said information this evening from NBC News. If you need verification for the story, I'm sure most of you have heard about this. Who, Those of you who stay in the know with social media and the news, this is pertaining to that. Doc, well, lingering cruise ship that's down in Florida. Cruise ship passengers desperately plead with Florida to allow them in. More than 1,400 passengers are arguing Florida to let them in, but officials say the state simply doesn't have the resources to take on an extra burden. This was updated this morning, April 1st, 2020 at 7.58 a.m. Okay. When Andrea Anderson and her husband boarded the MS Zandam cruise ship in Buenos Aires, Argentina, more than three weeks ago, they didn't know that their trip of a lifetime would disastrous, disastrously coincide with a global pandemic that would leave them shut out and stranded at sea. Unable to find a port willing to accept it, the ship has been stuck in a holding pattern for nearly two weeks as it desperately goes from country to country. So far, it has been rejected by Chile, Peru, and Argentina, which all sealed their ports because of the coronavirus coronavirus outbreak. It is now charting a hope field course for the United States, namely Fort Lauderdale, Florida. I don't know if they are going to accept us. I hope they do, said Anderson 63, a fiber artist from Mainville, Ohio. We need to get off this ship. Anderson and more than 1,200 other passengers are pleading with Florida to let them in, but officials including Governor Ron DeSantis, said the state simply doesn't have the resources to take on an extra burden amid a growing health crisis. We cannot afford to have people who are not even Floridians dump into South Florida, using up those valuable resources, DeSantis said, DeSantis said Monday on Fox News. Excuse me. Four people have died on the ship, at least two of them from the coronavirus, while nine others have tested positive and 179 more have flu-like symptoms. People are getting sick and they need proper medical attention in a hospital. They cannot be treated on board, Anderson said. The people on this boat, we are all someone's parents, grandparent, aunt, uncle. The governor should think, what if my mother was on that boat? While DeSantis has expressed staunch disapproval of the passengers disembarking, the final say lies in the hands of the Broward County Commission, which wasn't able to come to a decision on Tuesday. The commission is waiting for clear and proper protocols for disembarkation of a cruise line. Sorry about that. Commissioners still have a lot of conditions to consider, a spokesperson said. The Zandam and his sister ship, the Rotterdam, which took on asymptomatic passengers from Zandam, are scheduled to reach Flo uh, Fort Lauderdale by Wednesday much to the dismay of the city's mayor. So the sister ship, the Rotterdam, is also on its way to Fort Lauderdale tomorrow. Lord have mercy. We are a community that are trying to hold everything together, Mayor Dean Trontalis said Monday to, on Fox News. We don't need any more infection in our communities. It cannot come to Fort Lauderdale. More than 300 Americans are aboard the ships, including 49 Florida residents, several of whom live in Broward County. There is a video also that you can watch uh, in this said article of a daughter pleading for her parents who are aboard that uh, cruise ship. Passengers say that they are strictly confined to cramped cabins and that meals are left at their doors. Even during a special 30-minute dis uh, dispensation, allowing them to move around the ship, they couldn't touch anything, sit anywhere, or stand near anyone. The cruise ships run by Carnival Corps Holland America Line left Buenos Aires on March 8th for a two-week cruise through South America. The journey had been scheduled to end in Chile on March 21st, but the ship was shut out by the country. A second leg of the trip that some of the passengers were planning to stay for had been scheduled to continue until the first week of April, but was canceled by the cruise line. We started getting turned away by everyone, said Emily Spindler Brazil, a passenger from Tappahannock, Virginia, who was on the Zandam, but was later transferred to the Rotterdam. Now, that's the one that's coming 
tomorrow, the, the Rotterdam. The world was closing its doors as we sat there waiting. While she said passengers have been treated very well by the ship's staff, which has been working hard to provide online exercise classes and game nights to fill the time, she's worried that they will lose steam. It's a lot of pressure, she said, adding that life feels like the movie Waterworld because she hasn't touched land in weeks. I get it. I understand where they are coming from, said Brazil, who's in her 60s. But it's important for them to know that there are so many people who are feeling fine and we should be allowed to get off. It, oh, more, sorry. Orlando Ashford, president of Holland America, called the ship's multiple border rejections a humanit humanitarian crisis in a statement. We are dealing with a with a not-my-problem syndrome. The international community, consistently generous and helpful in the face of human suffering, shut itself off to Zandam, leaving her to fend for herself, he said. These are unfortunate souls unwillingly caught up in the fast-changing health, policy, and border restrictions that have rapidly swept the globe. Anderson is hopeful that Florida will realize the human toll of turning turning people away and will eventually allow them in. These are real people who are getting sick and who are away from families and proper care, she said. How many people have to die on this ship before they realize we need to get off? Okay, there is a correction for this said information updated at 7.30 p.m. today. An earlier version of this article misidentified one of the two ships that is being turned away from ports. It is the Rotterdam, not the Rotten Dam. The article also misspelled the last name of a passenger on the Ro Rotterdam. She is Emily Spindler Brazil, not Branzel. So correction, the boat that is to arrive in Fort Lauderdale tomorrow is called Rotterdam. And that is the said information brought to you by NBC News. If you need verification for the story, there's also a video in this said article that you can watch of the daughter pleading for her parents uh, safe return off the ship and now for my commentary this is a baffling story among all the other stories we have heard pertaining to this coronavirus I don't know how many of you feel about the ship being there floating on, on the water if you think Florida should let the if uh, the mayor and the commission of uh, that uh, Fort Lauderdale let the ship in or not some of the people on the boat are from Florida Many will say it won't matter who's on the boat. They're Americans. It doesn't matter. They need help. They need aid. I agree with that. But I am also worried about the people in Florida getting sick because what we have to say to ourselves, and not that I believe in letting the people sit there on that ship, but once they get off that ship, they have to go somewhere. They've got to get home. But more than likely, they probably need to get checked. So that's where I guess... The mayor and all of them in Florida are concerned with they're not going to be able to just get off the ship and then just go board an airplane and go home wherever they live in the United States. They're going to have to be checked out to make sure they don't have the coronavirus so they don't pass it to other passengers via car, plane, train, or whatever. Two, you probably have people who are already ill or deathly ill and barely hanging on. Now, one girl who's in this said article, in the video that you will see, she's, her parents are on that ship, and her father has been sick for 10 or 11 days now. And I don't know when that video was aired, but at that time, he'd been on the boat 10 or 11 days sick. So that's a problem considering he is an elderly gentleman. And the fact that he's been alive approaching two weeks and has not faltered, amen to him, Okay. Amen to him. Then there's the issue of the four who have died on the ship. Where are their bodies stored? See, this goes deeper than we know. And it's a tragedy because you have lives on the boat. You have thousands of people on the boat that need to get off and go to their home. You have staff that's on that boat. And they obviously need to get to their location or wherever they live in the States because we already know there won't be any more travel by cruises in the States or abroad because that would be foolish. So they will need to get to their said locations stateside 
So we have a demographic of people on a boat that need to get home, but also need to be tested first so they don't pass the virus to other people. Then if they do have the virus, then that means they need to be quarantined. And that's where the problem comes in with Fort Lauderdale. They don't want to have to use their resources to aid these sick people because they need those resources for their own city, county people who are afflicted as well. So that is the issue there. And then we also have to worry about people getting on the plane that don't have symptoms or a train, and then they get on crowded flight, not so crowded flight. Then they get to their said location, and then they get the coughing and a hacking, and now they are sick and need to go to a hospital in their town. And then now we have to worry about all the people they came in contact with on the plane, the train which got them to their home. That's where the problem lies. But we also know it is inhumane to let those people sway on that boat. Indeed sick. And the fact that the other members on the boat, staff and patrons, could also fall ill. And that would be cruel to leave them there. So hopefully... Somebody in the state of Florida will bring another, um, not another boat, but let the boat dock and have transportation and said place for those people on that boat to go to and be checked out and then go from there to get them to safety to their next location. That's the only thing that you, they can come up with. But as I said, that's been the issue with Fort Lauderdale. They know they're going to have to be the ones to foot the bill because they will be getting off that boat in their said city, and they will have to foot the bill to aid these cruise ship passengers and staff to their next location, housing, testing, all of that. And I get that. But we also know in the back of our minds, it would be cruel to leave them aboard that ship and they've already been lingering for two weeks. And then the gist of the story is the sister ship, the Rotterdam, she will be arriving Wednesday to see if she can dock and get those said passengers off the boat to safety. But where I have the problem is with the corporate office. Yeah. Let's keep it 100 because I don't leave a stone unturned when I talk about a subject matter. Um, you all were greedy. This cruise ship. You were greedy by taking people's money to board this ship when you knew that there was a virus floating around. And in this interview that you see in this article, a young lady who was talking about her parents, talking about when they boarded the uh, ship and the parents are talking about, yeah, 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 when we got on, we only knew of five people in South America, wherever that had the virus. That's the point proven right there. Why would you even book a cruise knowing that the coronavirus was out in the world? It doesn't matter that at the time that you heard about it, it was in China, or seat to Iran, or seat to the UK, or seat to Italy, Spain. The point is, you knew about the virus, and you booked a cruise anyway, knowing the virus was out there. And you admit during this interview that you knew of five people that allegedly had it in South America or whatever in the region that you're traveling on this boat. That is foolish and irresponsible. That means you didn't care anything about yourself. You didn't care about the other people sick. Because what made you think you couldn't get it? And now you all are not feeling well on this same said ship, on this same said cruise, that you are now floating on water and can't even get off and get to safety and get to help and get medical attention. See, that's where I have the problem is that you people knew about this virus and yet you still jumped on planes and trains and traveled. You all still took vacations, just like the mother and daughter that stuck down in South America on a winded, around-the-world trip. 
and now they're stuck down in a hotel making videos to Trump to let them back in. Let you back why? You had no business taking no trips via train, plane, bus, car, boat, nowhere. You should not have left America. Why would you leave America when there is a virus floating around? And you heard of it moving to different locations outside of China. That is foolish and ignorant. And the cruise line. You were stupid to take bookings for the said cruise. I'm trying to get this right name uh, of this company. I know it said the Holland something. This is stupid to me. This is outright stupid to me. The cruise ships run by Carnival Corps, Holland America Line. March 8th, went to Buenos Aires to carry these strange people around amid a virus. March 8th. I got my teeth pulled on the 6th, and that was a Friday. So this boat, ship, went around the waters on a Sunday amid the virus. It may, may not have been oh, hysteria at that time, but you knew of the virus. You knew of the virus, and that's my point. I blame Carnival because you had no business. You greedy people, you greedy corporate people, had no business booking any Passengers for the cruise ships that you own because you knew that there was a coronavirus circulating and emanating out into the earth and you took people's money anyway and you just assumed because I ain't near China, my ships ain't going near China, everything's all right. Well, everything ain't all right because now said people are on your cruise ships sick. Four have died. Now, I don't know who's died on the Rotterdam because that's another ship, that's a sister ship that will be approaching Fort Lauderdale tomorrow. I will bring you said information about that as I get it. But this is sickening. We now have two big cruise ships sitting on Florida water, but can't release the passengers until the commission makes a decision, if any. This is bad. And the cruise ship corporate office, Carnival, should never have allowed people to board their ships amid a virus outbreak. Why in the world you all would think the virus would not reach your passengers, your staff members, wherever they are, be it corporate in an office, a tall tower building, or a boat. It's all the same. People are people. The virus is transmitted by people. I think some of you people just out here, you just think people are what? They're made of steel? They're robots? What? Come on now. This is a bad day in America. Beside all these people being afflicted, children being afflicted, now pets being afflicted, we now have two boats that are going to be sitting in the United States floating on water, and the passengers can't even get off the boat to go home. But as I state, first to be checked out by a physician and to get the coronavirus test because they need that Johnny on the spot. And I'm praying that nobody else will die aboard either ship because they are in dire need. They need ventilation. They need to be walking around. They need to be stretching their legs. They need circulation. Their heart needs to be circulating. You cannot just sit in the same place all day. You can't be cooped up in a room without any air any natural air, sunlight. As someone said, you need vitamin D. This is true. You need all of that to sustain life. So I'm praying that Florida will come up with some type of solution with getting those people off those boats, those ships, and get them to a safe environment where they can be tested and get adequate medical attention. And then once they have passed the testing or the quarantine that will be implemented, then they can kindly go to their homes and live this is bad 
Now you see what I was saying about the video I made earlier about the reality check. That this just is just another example of what has what is wrong with people in this world. That people are greedy and they're hungry and money is all they think of. Money and things. And in the end, the money don't mean nothing if you can't spend it. The money don't mean nothing if you're sick and afflicted. The money don't mean nothing if you're dead. The money don't mean nothing if you can't make more money because people can't spend the money because they are in quarantine. You can't enjoy your fine things because you're sickly or you're dead. This is what we have been resorted to now. That the things that we liked and loved and loathed or whatever, idolized, worship, it means nothing. And what started off as a trip around the world to send pictures via Facebook, Instagram, put you so ever, phone, you know, pictures on your phone, it's now become a ghastly trip stuck on a boat. And it doesn't mean anything now. Because you went off that boat. God help us all. Like, share, subscribe. Drop your comments below. Thanks for joining me once again this evening. I pray that you all will stay safe. That you will stay prayerful. And that you will have faith that God will bring us through this horrible, horrible time. I am praying for all life. Two-legged, four-legged. And the little ones. God bless you all. And thanks for joining me and thanks for listening. I will be back with another update to the said information that I have brought you. And I will bring other updates to all stories that I have brought to you on this channel. Thanks for listening. You all have a safe night. Stay clean. Wash your hands. God bless you. Bye-bye.